What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today we're looking at the Glen Morangy Nectar Dog. Stick around. So we're back with another Glen Morangy today. Glen Morangy is a Highland distillery and it's also one of the top selling scotches in the world. Now we have done a couple reviews of Glen Morangy's before on this channel, done the 18, a couple of the special editions, but we've never touched on their more affordable core range. So we're about to fix that today. We're gonna to be looking at the Nectar Dog. This one has been finished in Sauternes casks. So Sauternes is a sweet white wine from France and it's become kind of like a semi-common whiskey finish. You don't see it all the time, but it does pop up here and there. Now of the Sauternes matured whiskeys on the market, our Glen Morangy here is probably the most high profile, that or maybe the Aaron. Um, now this is part of their core range and is also part of their wine cask finish series. Which is an interesting line. What they've done is they've released a series of affordable whiskeys that have been finished in different types of wine casks. And it's quite useful, especially for people who are just getting into whiskey, who want to understand how different types of casks might affect their whiskey. This Glen Morangy range is a bit of a mini library for them to get to know those flavors. Now Glen Morangy tinkered with their formulas in their range a couple years back and as a result, this whiskey lost its age statement. It used to be a 12 year old release and now it's a no age stated whiskey. Uh, with the old release, we knew that that one spent 10 years in bourbon barrels with an additional two years in those Sauternes casks. As far as the new release goes, I've done some digging online. I couldn't find much information about the age of the whiskey or the duration of the finish. So if any of you out there do know, do let me know down in the comments because I am kind of curious. Anyway, I like Glen Morangy. I think they're very good at finishes and I generally get along with sweeter whiskeys. So on paper, this whiskey should work for me. So why don't we find out? Why don't we hop into our review here, see what this whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So it is nice to have a Glen Morangy at 46%. Glen Morangy's ABVs can be all over the place, but they do get it right once in a while. Um, I also believe this is non-chill filtered, although I couldn't confirm that online. Uh, and I checked some German websites and it turns out this one is a colored whiskey. So we have two out of three here, which honestly for Glen Morangy, not bad. So we have our unnatural color here. As for the presentation, um, I guess it's fine. It doesn't really do much for me though. Uh, nectar dog means golden nectar. They definitely went all in on the gold theme. I do like the shape of Glen Morangy bottles, but personally I find this label to be one of their less interesting ones. Uh, score is gonna be two out of five for presentation here. Our info is decent. It tells us matured in bourbon barrels, finished in Sauternes casks. We have some basic flavor descriptors on the back. No mention of being non-chill filtered, it should. Obviously it doesn't tell us what the age of this whiskey is anymore, which is also unfortunate. Uh, we have our golden whiskey, our golden label, gold in the name. I love gold! But despite all that gold, it still doesn't really pop off the shelf. <laughs> For the nose. So honey, lemon zest, ginger, apples. So some fermented orchard fruit some vanilla shortbread in here. We have some bitter almonds and a touch of drying oak. For the palate. Mm. Bright, clean. We have um, some sweetness and some bitterness in here. Ginger ale, lemon lozenges, we have apple cider, apple vinegar, we have some bitter oranges in here, some bitter almonds in here. We have some vanilla shortbread and some light honey. And the finish. Okay, getting more of that ginger ale here. I'm getting McDonald's sweet and sour sauce, you know, for like dipping your chicken nuggets. That's in here. I'm getting some drying oak spice, getting some sawdust in here. There's some white pepper, there's some lemon hard candy, and some lingering florals in here. This is a short to medium finish. So this is a good demonstration of those Sauternes flavors. It's an approachable, sweet, sippable whiskey. 
Uh, and it's also kind of an interesting one. I've had this with friends on quite a few occasions and it always has the room divided 50-50. Now, of course, anytime you drink a whiskey, some people are gonna like it, some people not so much, but this one, it's always right down the center. Half the people like it, half the people not impressed. Anyway, I'm gonna start by talking about the things I do like in this whiskey. Uh, I like the sweetness in here. I think it's great. I think the casks have given it a nice, bright, sugary character. And not only that, it's got a quite clean vibe overall. Uh, there's nothing that's really offensive in this whiskey, although there are a few balance issues that we're gonna be talking about in a second. But overall, it does offer a pretty good glimpse of the kinds of flavors we can expect from a Sauternes finish. Now, this isn't my favorite Sauternes matured whiskey, but I do enjoy the bright, clean profile that we have here. Uh, we also have an effervescent quality to this that I always enjoy in whiskey. Kind of reminds me of soda. In this case, it reminds me of ginger ale. And finally, we have the Glenmo character. We can tell when we're drinking this that we're on a Glenmorangie, which works for me because I am a fan of the Glenmorangie house style. It's light, it's delicate, and it's always got these nice kind of creamy orangey notes to it that I always enjoy. Uh, and it's nice to have that house style shining through in this whiskey. However, I think there are a few other expressions from Glen Morangy that communicate the house style a little bit more clearly and effectively than this one does. I think the 10, which is a cheaper, simpler, much more basic whiskey than this one, does give us a better showing of the house style, as do things like the Alta. If you want to see the base flavors of Glen Morangy in all their glory, check out the Alta. That one's got a higher ABV, beautiful whiskey, hugely overlooked. Now, of course it does make sense, those are not finished whiskeys, this one is, and anyway, I am getting off track. This is a good whiskey, um, it's not a great whiskey. There's a couple things in here that didn't really work for me. I found the drying oak, those bitter flavors, and that intense sweetness did kind of clash a little bit. Now I wouldn't call this an off-balance whiskey, or maybe I would a little bit. It does feel like those flavors are pulling in different directions. Uh, not only that, this is one of those whiskeys, you're gonna enjoy it while you sip on it, but immediately forget about it afterwards, at least I do. For me, there's no real hook here. We do get the cask influence, but we don't get any kind of outstanding character. Also, this is a set of flavors that I personally wouldn't really seek out. So as I said, I sip it, I enjoy it, but then I forget about it pretty quickly and I walk right past it next time I'm at the shop. So score here is gonna be 83. It is a nice one, but it's not really to my taste and I won't be going out of my way to buy it again. Uh, I recently did a comparison with this one and another Glen Morgy called A Tale of Cake. Now, A Tale of Cake was also a sweet wine finished whiskey. That one was finished in Tokai wine casks. Uh, Tokai has been described as Sauternes on steroids, so I thought it would be an interesting comparison. And uh, the Glen Morangy Tale of Cake won by a long shot. I was much more enamored with that one. And by contrast, this one came off a little bit more basic. Now, this isn't a bad whiskey and that low score isn't because it's incompetently made, but for me, it just doesn't come together into anything that's particularly memorable or satisfying. As far as I'm concerned, this is a nice, bright, casual sipper with little to no wow factor and some wonky balance. That being said, if you're a fan of sweet and sour or sweet and bitter interplay, you might like this whiskey more than me. And I often say that the worst thing you can be as a whiskey is forgettable. Now, if you're good, of course, people are gonna remember that. And if you're bad, people are gonna remember that. But if you're just there and you're pleasant and you don't really do much, that's the kind of thing that I resent because I'm like, why did I spend my money on this? I don't even hate it enough to have any passion for it. Anyway, that's just how I feel about it. A lot of people out there do enjoy this one. And yeah, if you wanna try all the Glen Morangies and you haven't touched on this one yet, check it out. If you like Sauternes finishes, this one isn't a bad one. Um, it's, it's fine. So I'm not convinced this is a good value buy. It comes in slightly more expensive than your other Glen Morangy cask finishes. And to be honest, for me, all the cask finishes are fine, but not outstanding. But I don't see any particular reason why this one should be more expensive than those other ones. Especially since stuff like your Quinta Rubin or your Lysanta come in with age statements. Now, the difference between those ones and this one, it's only gonna be a few dollars or pounds, but it is enough for me to think twice about buying this one again. Also, if you want a better showing of a Sautern cast finished whiskey, I would suggest checking out the Aaron. That one has more flavor, more intensity, more character than this one. All right, that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do wanna hear from you. Have you tried the Nectar Dog? What were your thoughts on it? Did you like it more than I did? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you wanna see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.